Hey everyone, I am Caroline Corey. I am the writer, director, producer, host <laughs> of the film Superhuman, The Invisible Made Visible. So I am here today to talk about the film, but more importantly, I wanted to chat with the gorgeous, adorable <laughs> Rachel Brooks Smith. I just love this girl. And I just have to tell you, when I was casting this film, she wasn't supposed to be in the film because we had other folks lined up and uh, I saw her picture on um, on the the manager's page, and she just like caught my attention. I'm like, who's this girl? And, and I and I started like reading about her, and and I realized that she's into all this amazing spiritual, motivational, energetic, all that stuff. And I'm like, I need to have this girl in my movie. And she ended up having the biggest part in the film and she crushed it. So my dear Rachel. Yay! And, um, I, well, first of all, thank you for having me. And I just love this woman. Caroline is <laughs> such a living wonder woman. Um, you know, like all that she's doing in the world, I am such a, a big advocate of. And so when she called me to, you know, about this film, I was like, oh, this is right up my alley that all the things that I'm so passionate about talking about, you know, that, that everything that we're p potentially capable of that we don't know that we're capable of, you know, and, um, my love for mindset and manifestation and law of attraction and consciousness was just like, it was just such a dream come true. So I'm so grateful to be a part of the film and to get to know you and just to be part of this whole movement really. Yeah, because I saw that you also do a lot of your own motivational, you yes. know, classes and things like that. How did that, I mean, how did you get into this? Yeah, well, you know, it's a crazy thing that happened to me when I was younger. So I saw a film when I was about 14 years old and I was going through a really traumatic time in my life. I just broke my hand and I have, I had surgery. I have six pins in my hand. I don't know if you can see it, but I have my oh, back no. Um And uh, from gymnastics and I was in gymnastics. I had, I was just always so stressed out. I was so anxious. I was so afraid of, of getting hurt or getting yelled at or not being the best. And I had learned the power of my mind in a negative way. You know, I had, I had learned how powerful my mind was um, and what stress constantly live in fear and stress does to you. And it made me most of the time sick. Like I, I created, I manifested these things of, you know, being physically sick and being, um, you know, as a way, as a way out. But like, I, I had to learn that I was creating those things. Mm -hmm. And when I learned, I saw this movie called Center Stage around the same time. And I was so taken back by this movie that I, I was 14 year old girl. And I was like, oh, that's what I want to do. I want to <laughs> act. I want to dance. I want to inspire people the way that this film did for me, the way that the girls on the screen, you know, their hero's journey. Um, around, and I was like, I was really loud about that dream. I told everybody, I was like, that's what I want to do. And everybody laughed in my face and they're like, yeah, right. You're just a little girl from Phoenix, Arizona, whose family's in medicine, have no ties to the entertainment industry. And I was just like, no, I really feel like I can do this. <laughs> and then I came across this book at 14 called As a Man Thinketh. And I didn't even like reading. And for some, <laughs> whatever reason, this book just jumped out at me and I just had to read it. And I still to this day, I'm like, I don't even know how that happened. But when I read this book, it was just such a, a powerful, simple read, but things basically of like, we become what we think about all the time. And that concept, I remember being so mad that nobody told me that when I was like five years old, that like that my thoughts mattered and that they created what my, my experiences in life and how I responded to life and my perception of how I viewed the world. And once I started learning these things, I just became obsessed. Everything I could find on psychology, manifestation, law of attraction, consciousness, and my friends made fun of me, you know, cause I was like the girl that wanted to go to like workshops and seminars while my friends were like going to parties. <laughs> and, but it resulted in literally six years after I saw the movie Center Stage and I was 14, the film that changed my life, I ended up playing the lead in the sequel to that film six years later. I play the lead character, his name is Kate Parker in Center Stage, Turn It Up, and went on to play um, several other film roles in so many different films and TV shows and still to this day, literally 
live out my dreams, which everybody told me was impossible. And if that's not a story of our ability to manifest and create our experiences in life, I just don't know what is. And I just feel like I'm such living proof of that. And I just want my life to embody possibilities. And so, you know, that's what got me into, that's why I'm so passionate about mindset and, and consciousness and manifestation and our ability to do things that we just did maybe don't know that we're capable of only because somebody told us that we weren't, you know, but that doesn't mean that it's not possible. And that's what I loved about this movie so much. It was challenging these ideas that, you know, maybe we can be <laughs> blindfolded. Maybe we can move things with our mind. Maybe we can, you know, have psychic abilities, but it's just all about what do we believe it, that we're capable of? And one of my favorite quotes is, you know, be careful what you choose to believe because what you choose to believe becomes who you are mm. and what you're capable of. And I think this film is such living proof of that. I was going to say, because, you know, it's one thing to kind of know about the law of attraction. You know, we've been hearing about this yeah. for so many years. Yes. But as you know, in this film, I didn't want to just rehash the same stuff. Yes. I wanted to go to the next level of not just theory, but yes. demonstration, validation, science to, mm -hmm. to show that this is not just the concept that the mind yes. creates, like, okay, but how yes. is what this film is about. And so, but when I told you the experiment was going to be like remote viewing, like, uh, like what, what did you think? Did you think like, oh my God, I've never done this before. What is that? Like, what, what, did, yes. what is in your mind? Well, honestly, one excitement, you know, I didn't really know that much about remote viewing. And so when I started looking it up and seeing what I was getting myself into, I was like, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> but it, it made me, it like lit me up inside. Cause I was like, this is everything that I've talked about, but getting to prove it and really test it out. Right. So I went into both experiments that I was in, in the film, both telekinesis and remote viewing with a completely open mind. Like I wanted to go in with I almost told Caroline, I was like, you know, I don't even want to research it that much because I want to go in with a completely blank slate. And what I've learned over so many different life experiences and coaching people and seeing people at practice is like the mind always gets in the way. There's so much power in our intuition and our gut instincts that we have to be able to do incredible things. But if you start hearing opinions from everybody saying what's possible or not possible, then it, we start to create stories and we get in our own way. And that's a so when we did the remote viewing experiment and the tele tele telekinesis experiment, you'll see in the movie how I even think I talked about that, you know, and I asked questions like, you know, if you have a meditative practice, is it helpful in these, in these experiments? And they were like, yes, because it's helpful in that if meditation is a way to uh, stop the, the survival brain, <laughs> you know, as a way to get into trusting our intuition and our instincts. Um, and I was able to do things that I, I had no idea I could do. Like my mind was, so, I, I even told Caroline, I was like, if I wasn't a part of filming this, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I would believe that it was all real. And so I tell everybody, I was like, I get it. Like if you're watching this being like, oh, but it's a movie, it's movie magic. No, it's actually not. Like I was there <laughs> and I, I was, I was mind blown myself and I was, I was doing it. So, I mean, that's just, you know, something to think about. Yeah. So you guys just imagine. So Rachel Watson on set, right? So she's never done telekine, um, remote viewing. That was the yeah. that day. And um, so we have one of the top instructor, the instructors from the government, U.S. government, yeah. who ran the Stargate program teaching soldiers to do remote viewing to spy on the Russians. So how much more credibility do you want? <laughs> you know, the rest, like, out of the government from 20 year program. Um, and this guy is teaching actually Rachel and I, because I kind of, I was kind of the host of the film, but it was really mostly for Rachel. Although something very interesting happened. I don't know if you remember, mm -hmm. but anyway, this guy is giving us a crash course like in two hours yes um uh how, how to do remote viewing and then 
off we go. We, we, we break for lunch or something, and then we do the actual experiment. Now, don't forget, we're filming, right? So we have like, you know, cameras everywhere. We have, and mm -hmm. she's trying to concentrate and learn how to do remote viewing in two hours from yeah. the sky. And then we did do what we call an outbounder experiment, which is um, a couple of us, myself and crew member, we go to a remote location. And don't forget, we flew Rachel to Utah uh, to film this because that's where our location was on yeah. that day. So she had never been to the area before. No, I had never been to St. George. She, doesn't know. To yeah, yep. she doesn't even know what it looks like. She has no oh. clue. And she had arrived the night before. So it's not yeah. like she had time to to <laughs> do some tourism. And, yeah. and so we're on this location and she's supposed to literally pick up what where we were what we were doing what kind of <laughs> colors and shapes and sounds um that are in that place yeah and she nails it i mean and like it was like, like crazy and while i was doing it by the way like the first couple like trial experiments we were doing i was really trying to get the hang of it um and i was i i'm so aware of how when we try to do things perfect or do a good job, we get in our own way. We self-sabotage. And so I had to take a moment, like after the practice exercises that I wasn't having as much um, success with, I think, to just like be in my own space, get out of my own way. And I felt like it was such a, a great example just for life and for living, you know, that I learned so many powerful lessons from a remote viewing that I've applied in my life that anytime we want to be so good at something or we want something so bad that we have this attachment to it, that we kind of counterintuitively self-sabotage <laughs> uh, because we're trying to control so much. And what remote viewing really taught me was it is all about trusting your gut instinct, you know, and not letting your, your survival brain get in the way and try to make sense of things. Because when I just got in a space where I had to like literally forget that there was cameras on me, I had to forget about trying to do a good job. And all I, all I wanted to do was be so true to trusting my first gut instinct. And so when I was writing stuff down that was coming to me from instinct, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Like, I don't know where <laughs> I'm coming from. Like I was just writing down like, okay, black bars and, and uh, uh, this red circular thing and unstructured buildings, you know, that were like red brick. I just saw things so so clearly but the back of my mind was trying to say like what are you doing you don't know what you're doing like <laughs> they could be the mcdonald's for all you know you know yeah. i had no idea and so but i i kept being like no i don't care what mind i was literally like shut up mind i got it i'm i'm my trusting my instincts right now <laughs> and literally after i was done and there was we'll talk about what happened it's a really cool experiment that that caroline did without me even knowing was i was getting all this these downloads if you will these like inspirations um to write to write things down um a very clear things that i was seeing like you know those black bars and the, and the red circular thing and music and laughter and these red brick unstructured buildings um and and again i had never been to st george utah so i didn't know what was going on and i saw these decorative lights and it wasn't holiday time you know <laughs> and so i was like Okay, I'm just right. I guys, I, I honestly was like, when I got done, I was like, I might have just failed. Like, I have no idea if this, if I even did. What yeah. did. Especially, do you remember before we did the experiment? Because we did like two or three exercises. And before yep. we did this outbounder experiment, he, we did a quick one where he had a picture in his hand. Yes. And you and I had to draw, pick up information on what that picture was. Do you yep. remember? I and do. So, so, so Rachel and I are like sitting next to each other and just kind of like getting like downloads or, you know, trying yes. to see what that picture was so we're writing like okay uh like lake like water like blue like buildings we're writing all that stuff right and then the guy showed us the paper and it was completely different it was like a forest or something yes. but what happened was rachel and i had the exact same thing do you remember yes yeah it, it, was, was, it was different yeah so so rachel and i were picking up on stuff 
exactly in the same way. Mm -hmm. It was different than what the guy was trying to teach us, but which told us that we are, you know what I mean? Like, I yes, think we're connected. We're connected. Like we had the same water, the same building, the same everything. And so, so that was good training. But yeah. then, then when we did it for real, Yes, you just nailed it. It was incredible, yeah. and so in fact, I want to show the clip. Shall we show the clip? I yeah, want to show the clip, and I just want everybody to know that again. Like I had no idea. Like I want people to really know that this wasn't some like fake movie magic thing. I had no idea when we even pulled up to the building. My mind was blown that I got it right because I honestly was like, I don't know what I just did. All I did was trust my instincts and try. And not let my brain get in the way. That's all I. Were, you, were you nervous? Like when we. So so after the exercise, she tries to pick yes. up what, what's happening remotely, and yep. then she gets to go to yep. the location to kind of see if it matched what she saw. Were you nervous? Like, oh my god, did I like totally mess this up? Yeah, <laughs> I really was because I really thought like, yeah, this is my first time doing this, yeah. and the practice exercises didn't necessarily go um, exactly perfectly well you yeah. know and so I was like maybe I'm just not good at this <laughs> but when it was just me and I was able to like have some time to get in a more of a meditative space and like forget about cameras and be in a different state of being I think of again not trying to be right I was just trying I was just literally my only intention was to trust my instincts um and my it proved that it can work because it, it works Oh my God, let's show this clip for people to know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to mute you for a second and I'm going to show the clip and then we'll be right back. Oh my gosh, this is blowing my mind. Like this is insane. Lights, I wrote down lights and I literally thought there's Christmas lights and I said decorative lights in the front and a whole building and said it's a structure that's unleveled. Like I am mind blown right now. Oh my god. Really, like I I I can't believe it. Like I what literally you... can't believe it. So what what happened? Well, first of all, one of the biggest things I picked up on was decorative lights. Like I literally wrote like Christmas lights, decorative lights, and that's a Christmas tree. That's a Christmas tree. And right here, you can see I wrote lights, Christmas decorative. The first thing I did yeah. is I walked all the way to the Christmas tree. I kept saying this like kind of reddish color and obviously like all the buildings. A red. A red. Amazing. <laughs> uh, but I also said, remember the circular thing for the carousel? I said there's this red feeling that's like almost like a circular feeling. This was a crash course yes. in just a few hours and you've yeah. never been here before. What did you learn about yourself? I think it just reconfirmed for me the belief that we have so much more capabilities than we think we do, you know? And that I think if you can have an open mind and learn and try new things, uh, I mean, who knows what you'll be capable of, especially after this experience, if we could all live just in more curiosity, not mm -hmm. trying so hard, but just being curious about life and about our abilities. I feel like we could achieve so much more as well as just experience and enjoy life mm -hmm. so much more. Well, <laughs> still like watching that is so fun for me. And I just want everyone to know, like, I mean, I, I, I act in films. I am an actress, but I was not acting in that. Like that was real, like real time. I was pulling up to this place and me seeing everything that I had described and me be just mind blown. Cause again, like they could have been at a McDonald's for all I knew. They could have been on a mountaintop. Like they could have been anywhere. <laughs> and I had no idea what St. George, Utah even looked like. I didn't know that a lot of their architecture was red brick buildings that were 
um, you know, not flat. Like they were all, um, I don't know what the right word is for that, but I was saying unstructured yeah. or unlevel buildings. But yeah, but, it was. But you know what, what really, really did it was the Starbucks thing. I have to tell the yes. story because yes. that's yes. insane. So the instructor told us, because we were going to that location, they said, you go straight to the location because psychologically, whatever Rachel's subconscious mind, blah, 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 is already tapped into that location. So you just go straight there and you start doing stuff. So that these were the instructions. So of course we've been filming all day. And then as we are, we were going to the location, I was with the crew member. I was like, you guys, I'm dying for a coffee <laughs> you know can we like just stop the Starbucks on the way like yes. if there's no line if we could do a drive-through I'll just like pick it up real quick and we'll go and if there's and we can't we can't so of course there's no line we go in a drive-through I pick up a couple of Starbucks and we just go so and we try I try to like you know shield myself like nobody's gonna know <laughs> and as Rachel, yeah, you want to tell the rest? Yeah, so, like, I really want to tell. So when I'm doing the remote viewing, right? I'm in my own separate room. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just writing down gut instincts. And I just keep getting this like hot drink. I'm like, this is a hot drink. You know, and none of the things I'm saying are adding up, right? Because I'm writing down like decorative lights, like red circular thing, like red brick buildings. And out of nowhere, I feel this like hot drink. And he told me, he was like, your mind is going to want to associate things. So if we, we you know, if we see red truck, our mind might associate it with like a red fire truck, but it doesn't mean that that's the case. Same thing with like a hot drink. You know, he was like, if your mind starts to think like Starbucks, you know, write it down on the other side of the paper, just so it's out of the way, it's out of your mind. And I was like, I really, I just did. I wrote down, I wrote down Starbucks on the side. Cause I was like, gosh, I just, that's what's, that's what I'm feeling right now. And funny enough like they went to starbucks so, so this proved this was to me like the crazy validation that even though she was not supposed to she was supposed to pick up what you know that location it means that she was totally connected and she saw exactly what we did Mm -hmm. That blew my mind. So, I mean, this was crazy. I, and and you know what happened, Rachel, is that when you did it and you nailed it, what happens is that the people to the crew members were also like, how did she do that? Like, it, it, and, and you inspired them is what I want to say. Aww, you know? yeah. So well, I, hope, I hope it inspires a lot of people that anyone who watches this to be like, man, you know, just like I said in, in that clip, you know, just to live with more curiosity and open-mindedness to what we're actually capable of. And, you know, just to really think about the fact that like flying in an airplane was impossible, not that long ago, you know, doing this, you know, talking over, talking from different parts of the world over a screen was impossible, not that long ago. Like there's so many things that we might be absolutely capable of. Um, it's just up to us to say like, are we willing to be brave enough to live curiously and open-minded enough to try out stuff and not call it stupid or impossible because what if it actually is yeah exactly and it's like you miss the opportunity yourself you know uh -huh. and so and by the way for those who are just uh, who um ju are just joining we're broadcasting on many facebook platforms so feel free to type in your questions we're gonna see if there are any questions for rachel or for myself uh, about the film superhuman and again uh it is now available we just opened the film and it's doing amazing yes. um and uh we're doing so much because i of course uh the filmmaker um, i believe in the message this has been my uh, journey for the past 20 years, even since I was five, I would remote view. <laughs> I would see what was on the other side of the wall. and But I thought it was normal. Mm. And so I didn't talk about it and because I thought, oh, everybody does that. And so, and I could hear like people's minds and I thought, oh, everybody can do that. And of course it was later on that I realized, well, no, maybe not everybody but everybody should be doing that because it's such a natural ability. And so that's why with this film, um, I'm hoping that people will just remember. And um, 
one of the reasons why I invited people who, random folks, but also celebrities and gorgeous actresses and, you know, like Rachel and, you know, to, to be part of the film is to show, like we've been saying for the last half hour, never done this before and are able to demonstrate it just like that. And that is the reason why we're doing this. So if you're just joining, feel free to leave questions for Rachel um, in the comments. We have Michael with us. If there's something specific right now, uh, let us know, Michael, uh, if there are questions for Rachel. Otherwise, we'll keep going. What do you think? Well, and I do think a lot of people are, are you know, putting in questions. I really want to say that it's, I, I mean, I really feel like Caroline said, maybe these are all capabilities that we all have, but just like, you know, I think it's very accepted as a society that in order to get physically strong, you have to do things, exercises that will build those physical muscles on a regular basis. Same thing with mental strength and emotional strength, spiritual strength, like th these kind of strengths, right? If you want to do anything well in life, you have to practice it. And I think it's, one, it's being, curious enough to try to being open-minded enough to allow it to be possible and to have the belief that like, yeah, maybe I actually can do this. And third, being able to actually put in the time to practice, right? Like I don't just get good at something. And I think one of the reasons why I was able to actually, you know, do well at this experiment was because I've been practicing similar things for the majority of my life, you know, things like meditation or things like um, visualization, things like um, reading all of these concepts and, and exercising these muscles kind of in, in a different way. But like, I, I think just anything like, you know, if, if we want to be good at anything, we have to be open to trying it and to practicing it before we make a judgment about it. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and it's like kind of, uh, I feel also it's very timely with everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. It's like, and by the way, your mind is free, you know, it's like, yeah, exactly. it's like, like why not even try, you know, it's yeah. like, so we did an experiment with the water, you know, changing the pH of water in the film. Mm -hmm. So to me, this was so important because if we are able to change the pH in the water, it means that, which we did obviously, and these are experiments we've done scientifically over and over in labs. Uh, and so, you know, we were able to show it again on film. And if we can do that with water, it means we can do it to our bodies because our bodies are mostly water. And so yeah. what I'm saying is these exercises, the remote viewing, the water, you know, the blindfolds, we're going to talk about telekinesis in a second, you know, all of these demonstrations are validation that there is a measure, measurable component. There is something, uh, there is an interaction that we can detect between consciousness and the physical world. And that's how we are creating the physical reality. So anyway, Michael, do you have questions for Rachel or I? You know, everyone in chat right now is pretty much just riveted listening to your conversation. I'm watching Rachel's Facebook page as well as yours. And I'm in the YouTube chat, but I just wanted to make a comment. We've had three guests in a row now who all are very talented at what they do. And all three of them have said, hey, everybody can do this. However, it's just like physical exercise. This is something that you need to, to work on mm -hmm. constantly or really embrace it. And to, in order to get better at it, and I think that's very profound. Yeah, because like well, you know, of course, everybody has the innate ability, but just like anything, you know, I mean, Rachel, you are an incredible gymnast, an incredible, mind blowing dancer. So all of this is discipline. I mean, you didn't get there in yeah. one day. No. So kind of bizarre like people expect that they're going to be able to you know although i can teach you how to bend spoons in literally 10 minutes uh, <laughs> you know but i mean you just you just have to do it you know right yeah. so, i mean you have to like uh, instead of saying nah this is for somebody else mm -hmm. so after this we ask rachel i was like this girl is so good what i like about you also rachel is that you uh in the film it, you are so natural like in other words um, yes, you try, you let go and you did that. But like, when I ask you to comment, like, how did that feel? It just comes to you naturally. It's like, this is you, this is who you are, you know? And that's what I love. Like, this is not acting people. Yes. She's, I mean, even though she is a great actress, but I mean, <laughs> like, this is who you are. And I love that about yes. you, that this is your second nature. Uh -huh. 
No, it really is. I mean, I think if I've always thought, I mean, even, even my reasoning for becoming an actress was to better understand the human condition. I've just said it's a very young age. I've been so fascinated with, with the human experience, you know, and that's why I studied psychology. That's why I studied all different kinds of everything about the power of your mind. I mean, my, my father's a brain surgeon, my brother's a neuroscientist and my mom's a nutritionist. So I grew up in this family of, um, you know, um, scientists and doctors and, and I think it, you know, it always inspired me so much, but that it led me down a path of studying the human condition in a way of acting. Mm. But my, my passion and what I also, when I, you know, I do a lot of like speaking engagements and workshops, I love teaching just the, the these, these principles, you know, like what, what the power of your mind and, you know, so much of my story earlier, how I played literally the lead role in the sequel to the film that changed my life as a little girl and still continue to do things all the time that, that somebody might laugh at or think is impossible. And I'm like, okay, well just, just watch me do it. <laughs> you know, but, I think, but so much of it too, you know, me and my, my boyfriend talk about this a lot is this living in the knowing, you know, that there's this ladder of, you know, first you have to have like a hope that something could be true. And then maybe that hope develops a little bit more into like a faith. And then that faith develops a little bit more into a belief. And then that belief develops a little bit more into a knowing. Mm -hmm. And the knowing, when you live in that knowing, right? It's like it, it, limitless capabilities because if you tell somebody like, you know, if somebody just decides like, oh man, I'm not going to find it. They've already decided like, they're not going to find it. But if someone just is like, no, I know I'm going to find it. Like they're going to go through, they're going to use their creative power. They're going to use their intuition. They're going to use all of their resources because they just ahead of time know it somehow. And so I think it's, we talk about all the time, we're like, man, how can we teach knowing, you know, like this <laughs> knowing of like, and, and I don't, I think it's more of like, it's, it's that, that you have to practice and experience and go through these different levels. Um, and I feel like, you know, we're not human thinkings, we're human beings. Like we, we learn and we, um, we grow and we have these different belief systems based on experiences. So if I had an experience of everyone telling me I wasn't capable, I wasn't, I wasn't able to do these things and I actually listened to them, that would have changed the whole trajectory of my life. But because I decided to view them as opinions, right? Like that everything is just an opinion. And if I can be a lot more careful about whose opinions I choose to believe, knowing that every opinion I believe literally changes the trajectory of my life. <laughs> and yeah. if I want to live a life that's full of incredible experiences and amazing relationships and, you know, very like full, like I just want, I want to look back on my life and be like, man, I lived every ounce out of life <laughs> that I possibly could. And for me, the only way I feel like I can actually do that is to choose very carefully to really only focus and believe people's opinions that empower me and inspire me and challenge me rather than anything else. Right. And, uh, you know, that's what I said, like you live this, you know, yeah. not, it's not like you, you just, somebody's just telling you and you're repeating it, you literally live it. And yeah. so, um, so, but what I also wanted to say that mm -hmm. in this film, you know, all these concepts, you got to a point of understanding it and living it, mm -hmm. but a lot of people hear these things and it's still kind of like foreign to them, not foreign, but like, but how do I get there? Mm -hmm. And so what I wanted to do in the film is not just um, just talk about it for those people who don't know how to get there, but literally demonstrate, like that's why we did all of these experiments, like, hey, yes. look at it. We're, this is an experiment where the mind is changing the electricity in water. This is the mind changing, you know, this is the mind moving an object, which is yes. the next thing that I asked Rachel to do. So, so that's what I feel like hopefully with this film, it's for the people who don't know how to get there, at least we'll have that additional piece of validation. Yeah, like, yeah, like this, this is yeah. real. So therefore, maybe I could just give it a go, you know, like yeah. try it. Well, and that's what I, I love so much too. And I'm loving the, you know, obviously we live in an interesting time right now, but, you know, to be able to provide different workshops and experiences based off of what we did in the film, to be able to provide people opportunities to like, oh, this is where I can go to learn how to do this or to try this out or to see for myself. Um, and that's what I would love to invite people to do is, you know, when you watch the film, you'll probably be pretty mind blown. And <laughs> rather than staying in that mind blownness to like really 
you know, if you're, if you feel inspired to look more into it and to learn more about it. And because who knows what that might lead you to do in your life, you know, maybe it leads you to solve pro a huge world problems, you know, like we need people to be curious about these things because it will be the way that we <laughs> help each other heal from massive world problems eventually. Especially you know? right now. Yeah. So, yeah. so I want to talk about the next experiment. So here we are now. I love Rachel. I'm like, let's do this other thing in the film. Um, and it is telekinesis. Basically, it's the ability to move a physical object without touching the object. What were you thinking? I mean, what I told you, like, I mean, did that, did you, I mean, the, yeah. this, the remote viewing was one thing, mm -hmm. but still that was another challenge. And I remember yeah. when you were on location for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So I stayed at a hotel and, you know, you, people are uncomfortable yeah. usually. And I think that morning, if I remember, you had to kind of do, psych yourself. I, I, I remember you had to do a little bit of shifting to get your that mindset to be able to move an object. Never done this before. Yes. In two hours. The thing is, yeah. getting, we're going to show you. Go ahead, Rachel. Yeah, I just, you know, I think it was so incredible. Like after the remote viewing experience, I was, my mind was even more open and more excited about like, man, maybe I do have these, you know, these superpowers that I didn't know that I had and that all people, you know, I really do believe have. It's just like that willingness to try to be open-minded about it. Um, and so I think it was, it was just a lot of excitement. But then of course, you know, like I, and I learned from the last experiments, okay, like I just have to forget that cameras are even here and I have to forget about trying to do a good job. Because again, in life, I think this is exactly how we kind of self-sabotage or we kind of mess things up. Whenever we're trying so hard to be perfect or to do a good job, we just get in our own way. And mm -hmm. so I think the more in these kind of experiences and in life, we can just be like, I don't care what the outcome is. In fact, in telekinesis, that's exactly what I did. I had to literally let go of outcome. I had to be like, I don't care if it doesn't move at all. Like, because anytime we're trying to force something or like make something happen, it, it's a different kind of energy that isn't the kind of energy that you want to be in to be able to do these kind of things. And in the clip, in the when I did this experiment, it was so crazy to me because I was asking him questions like, you know, does it, it was about creating a relationship with this piece of tinfoil, you know, and, <laughs> and, you know, which for me was like super fun. And I think, again, I talk all the time about like learning from kids, like that I think kids just know how to live the best because they're so present. They're so curious. They're so playful. They have so much fun in life. And that literally, we all have that inside of us. And then it just gets like beaten out of us as we get older. And I think I'm constantly trying to, you know, talk about and learn from kids. And the thing that I learn from them the most is like this, this playfulness, this curiosity, and, and to be able to, you know, create a relationship with a piece of tinfoil <laughs> um, and to not have any judgments about that, you know, that this is just like, oh, this is just like the cool, fun thing we get to do right now. And it was when I, at first I was trying to like send it loving energy because that's just something I've learned that is helpful is like, I just believe in the power of love. And so when I was asking him about that and I was trying to like, you know, just make it move with like sending it love and nothing was happening. And then as soon as I remembered um, something I had learned a long time ago from different coaches and mentors about, it's not what we think that we attract. It's who we are that we attract. Mm, love and that. So, yeah. And so I was like, okay, if, if that's the case, then I need to get myself in a state of love. I can't just be thinking loving thoughts. I have to literally be in the state of like unconditional love. And so I started like, I closed my eyes. I started thinking about when I fell in love with my boyfriend, when, you know, holding a, a newborn baby, like different things that would really get me in the state of like, just being in the state of love. As soon as I did that, all of a sudden you'll see it on camera. This piece of tinfoil just starts moving. <laughs> and then as soon as I get really excited about it, I don't know if this was shown in the film and I can't remember. As soon as I got really excited about it, like, Ooh, look what I can do. It cut, it stopped, you know, because that's kind of when my ego got in the way and it was more about like, Ooh, look at me. And so I think that just had so many powerful life principles of like, when we're that again, we don't necessarily get what we are thinking about. We get who we are. We get what we're embodying.
I love this. This is like, oh my God, amen. I mean, like really, if anybody can take any lesson out of this, is mm -hmm. not what you do, is who you are and how you can be, who, stay who you are. But also um, you said something very important. So when we're doing these experiments about, you know, the tin foil or whatever, you discover things about you. It's not about yes. the soil because people look yes. at this and sometimes they, they're very quick to dismiss it sometimes like, yes. yeah, whatever, you know, but just try doing it yourself because yes. that dynamic starts to happen and you start to kind of realize like what you said, when you went into ego, it stopped yes. working. Yes. When you went into love, it was, mm -hmm. it was responding. So you learn, you recognize how you are mm -hmm. it, of course the tin foil is the physical world so it's like yes. it's not tin foils you know but it's, so that's how you are interacting with the physical world so this is what this is about let's watch this clip yes. it is so 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 fun and again you blew us away hold on I saw a movie that changed my life and I had this like very life-changing experience where I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to perform, I want to act, I want to inspire people just like that film did for me through focusing on that, intending it, writing it down, having vision boards, like seeing it, watching it every day, seeing myself do it every day. I ended up playing the lead in the sequel to that same film six years later, something that everybody told me was impossible. Where you place your awareness is where energy goes as maybe silly to some as this may sound, sending love to the material, saying like, you know, I love you, like, let's work together on this, let's be one, you know, let's move together. Look what it's doing as you're talking about love. Your heart's opening as you're yeah. talking about it and it feels it. And I can also feel whenever I start to feel those ego thoughts or wanting to get it right or afraid of failure, then there's this disconnect. Um, and I think that's so powerful to understand that that's the whole thing of ego. It's like the want to get it right is can block you. But when you just allow and, and be filled with love and energy, like amazing, miraculous things can happen. How about that? <laughs> I know. I know. So uh, you saw because some people right away, you know, jump to conclusion. Oh, she's touching the glass. But you know, don't forget. You know, this is a crash course, so you learn gradually. I just taught a class actually online. First, you learn without any glass. You even can come close to the piece of paper. Then you put a glass on, and then you, you kind of play with it, even if it heats up the temperature a little bit it's not yeah. going to make it rotate that way but even then the argument is then you take uh the, you take off your hand completely you're completely far from it yeah. and it yeah. still reacts like crazy yeah so i mean were you blown away and, she, and you're like talking but as you're talking you're projecting the energy as soon as yeah. you said love i remember it yeah. stuck in my mind the yeah. minute you said love it starts to move yeah. and it never stopped. And I think it's really important, you know, I remember because that was already after, right? Cause I, I do remember specifically when I was, when I, even when I was just sending it love, I don't remember anything necessarily happening. It was when I was in the state of being of love. Hmm. So I think that those are really two different things. Cause I can be sending something love and maybe it will have an, it will have an effect, right? Absolutely. Like the power of love is phenomenal, but I think, if you're like, I'm being like a, like the telekinesis master said, like you're being a, a conduit of energy. And if your energy is, if I'm in a state of like hatred or fear, I can't be sending what I don't have, you know, like if I'm, so I think it's really important to realize that like, it really matters. I, my, my, my experience was it really matters what kind of energetic state of being that you're in. Because again, you're, you're being this conduit of, of energy. And so if I'm like sending like hate and fear, it's probably not going to do very much, you know, even though I'm thinking loving thoughts. I just I think it's really important to 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 talk about the difference between thinking a thought and being an, an energetic um, like embodiment.
That's incredible. I love this. I've been teaching this for 20 years and she just says it so eloquently <laughs> and she lives it and she does it. And she, so can you maybe explain in your words? So the difference between thinking love mm -hmm. or sending love, which you mm -hmm. said that didn't do the trick. Yeah. What did you have to do? What is the internal work that you have to yes. do to yes. shift from the sending yes. to the becoming? Love. Becoming, yeah for me it was i mean i closed my eyes and i was really remembering like i had recently you know fallen like madly in love with my boyfriend <laughs> and he was like my dream you know somebody that i really feel like i manifested um into my life through this power of creation because it had been something that i had written down and visualized and 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 practiced gratitude ahead of time as if i had already found this person right um, and so I feel like, you know, I was just remembering, I was closing my eyes and just like taking myself back to those experiences, remembering, you know, literally like falling in love with him. And also like different moments where like my dad had me and my, my father were like dancing together in the kitchen when I was younger, just really powerful experiences that not only uh, where my whole body felt like I was like in, in a state of love rather wow. than just, rather than just like sending loving energy you know i think and so that to me was was pretty profound you know because i think you know anybody watching can really if you just think a loving thought right like if i'm just like oh i send you love like that's nice but it's not like this really deep emotional visceral experience mm -hmm. and again i think it's more about those visceral experiences where our emotions are so powerful you know like if i'm in a state of sadness I can feel that. I have a physical response. Tears come out of my eyes. If I'm angry, like I have a physical response of like, like rage, you know, and adrenaline. And so when you're in a state of energetical state of love, like there is incredible side effects, if you will, that can come from that. Um, but they're very different states of being. And like our thoughts affect the way that we feel and the way we feel affects um, our responses to life yeah i love that and you know because like when you think a loving thought to someone it's still very mental yes and true. you're not just mental you yeah. are a whole being you are mental emotional spiritual energetic yes and so and i feel like when you say i have to become love mm -hmm. it's as if you, it's like you are taking all aspects of your being and experiencing yeah. love yourself on a cellular yes. level yes that's exactly what it is it's like i had to experience love rather than just think a thought about it exactly um, which is huge or, or send because you know when we talk about telekinesis like oh i want to move this object da, 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 da. so you think like ooh, you know like you have to send this energy yeah. like you know yeah. uh the force or whatever but that's not it at all and this yeah. is such a profound lesson rachel for people who are listening, because we think we're doing it right. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, we think like, oh, or let's think positive. Let's just think positive. If I think mm -hmm. positive, then my problem's gonna go away. Uh, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm successful, I'm beautiful, whatever. So that's, I'm thinking and projecting, my conscious mind is saying these things, but on a cellular level, I feel yes. totally different nothing's oh, gonna yes. happen yes. so that's it's so profound what you just said so how do people like what do you i mean how can uh, this be used now you know yes. and especially with what's happening in the world how yes. are you coping with it mm -hmm. yeah and what can you say to people like everything that you've learned mm -hmm. that people can use to cope with what's happening right now yeah well i mean i in fact, so passionate about all of this, you know, for the past two years, I've been working on a program called Transform My Life that recently just came out. And it's um, a full online program that me and my partner created teaching these principles of how to transform fear into freedom, you know, transform fear into action. And so much of what we're talking about, right, is transformation, that we're such adaptable, transformative beings. And so, I mean, that's really what I would say is that if anybody's really interested, just go to tmllife.com and check it out. Like it's so powerful. Um, and we've literally getting people's responses from around the world saying, 
I'm able to do things I never thought I could, um, which just makes my day because, you know, I've put like so much time, energy, effort, work, my life's work into, into this program. And along with the film, they just go so hand in hand, you know, of, of this film being like, look at what's possible, you know, and then there's like the workshops that you teach and that I teach, like there's practical principles that we can apply to life. And, and for me, like you said, it's not necessarily about the tinfoil. It's not about the, oh, I can remote view. It's more about what you find out about yourself. Exactly. And especially, you know, knowing that when you learn these principles, you're not, you don't have to live in fear. <laughs> I think there's a lot of fear going on. You exactly. know, and that's, we base the whole program off of like, learning how to transform fear because we're always going to feel it right there's going to have there's things that come up in life there's challenges that happen there's pandemics that happen <laughs> and it's it's a choice you know how am i going to perceive what's going on around me and my perception will affect the way that i think and feel and respond and if i can learn these powerful practical principles that can change the way i can take anything that's going on and transform it from a place of fear to a place of love and freedom, then, then you, you're not, so you're not making, you're not allowing external things to affect your internal world. You're having your internal world affect the external world, which I think is just so profound and powerful. And like Caroline said, there's, you know, we just have so much more power than we know. And I just want to help empower people with this film and with everything that I am a part of that, that it's possible, you know, and that me and Caroline here talking are no different than you watching. We're all just, we all have our unique gifts and talents and abilities. And I believe that every single person alive has these powerful gifts and it, the world needs those powerful gifts because we're going through a lot right now collectively. And it's when, you know, when people show up and say, you know what, I want to learn what I am actually capable of so that I can use my unique gifts and talents to transform the world into a more loving, healthy, healing, supportive, empowering space. I love that. So because it, it is about transformation. What is the name yeah. of your program again? We're going to put it in the yeah. chat. Oh, if you can type yeah. it in the chat. What is it's it called? A, transform. It's a, um, yeah, it's called Transform My Life. Transform um, My Life. Yeah, the oh. website is tmllife.com. TMLlife.com. If we can yeah. put it in the in the chat also, yeah, because be because this is what this is about is the shift from thinking and doing. Thinking, mm -hmm. I'm gonna move the object. Doing, I want you to move the object. To yeah. being. Yes, to being. It, it's yeah. such. I mean, this is such a hugely yeah. important lesson yeah. that you can apply to anything in your life. You know. Well, I and I think it's so powerful because, you know, the secret did a lot for the world, right? It, it brought forth these, these, um, these thoughts, these thoughts and ideas and concepts, but there was so much more, like I said, they talked so much about like, just think it, think it, think it. But the crazy thing is, is I could think a thought, right? They're like, oh, I want to attract a million dollars. But if I'm not being <laughs> somebody who is, is a millionaire, then it completely different things, right? Like I could think a thought like, oh, I want to play a role like Wonder Woman, which is one of my biggest dreams now, is to <laughs> play a role like Wonder Woman. <laughs> but if I'm living in a state of fear that that's never going to happen, then I'm completely conflicting myself. And so that's why I was talking about that ladder of like there's faith and there's hope and then there's belief and then there's knowing. And once we can get to a place where we live in that knowing, that energetic state of no matter what circumstances look like, I am, I am able to change those external circumstances with my internal world. And that internal world is my beingness, not just my thinkingness, <laughs> my actual beingness. Absolutely. And so, so then now, you know, with the COVID or whatever, mm -hmm. basically the big, you know, headline is uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. people are like, what's my life going to look like? What's my job going to look like? What's my money going to look like? What's that? Yeah. Da, da, da. But, you know, so obviously it's affected every single person on the planet. So we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. So perhaps with the tools that you're offering, perhaps the tools that are in this film, mm -hmm. you know, it's a reminder that, you know what? I think we've always been in a state of uncertainty. It's just a different mm -hmm. kind of it. Like, yeah. I, think, I think sometimes I say like, I think we were in the illusion 
Yes. Before, you know, that we were safe, but we were never safe. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. How, how were we safe? Like, you could just walk out and get hit by a bus and you're done. You could yeah. lose your money overnight. You know, I mean, all of these uncertainties, I think, were always there. Yeah. I think, you know, well, but now yeah. it's like it's in our face. It's, you yeah. know, so, so we have to learn to yeah. deal with uncertainty. Mm -hmm. it, now as opposed to yeah. pretend it's not there you know yeah. i love that you brought that up and i think you know in all throughout all of time right we can learn a lot through things that have happened in the past different things like this that that to a lot of people seem like the worst things that ever happened for the people that were open-minded that were curious and that were had that knowing that i'm just going to figure this out somehow they were able to create more wealth, more abundance, more love, more opportunities than than ever before. And so yeah. I think, you know, some people see problems, some people see opportunities. And it's just about like who what kind of person are you going to choose to be? Because it's always up to you, whoever you want to choose to be <laughs> and yeah. how you want to perceive things. And you know, there I think that's why, you know, there's just so much power that we have that if you feel fear, don't allow it to, there's ways to not allow it to consume you. And it's all about like the choices that we make, you know, what content are you, cause we are what we consume. So if I'm consuming really toxic media, I'm not going to feel very good. If I'm consuming toxic food, I'm not going to feel very good. You know, it's like all the different things, but if I'm consuming content like this, it's going to inspire me and empower me and help me be like, yeah, maybe I can do things. You know, if I'm, if I'm consuming if I'm consuming things that are empowering me and supporting me and encouraging me, then I'm going to constantly evolve and grow and learn and, and create possibilities and opportunities and vice versa for the other side, you know? So I think it's just be really careful what opinions, what opinions you listen to, because what opinions you choose to believe is literally that will create who you are and the whole trajectory of your life. Yeah, exactly. And and there's nothing wrong with be fear, be, you know, having, the initial reaction of being fearful. Yes. It's okay. We all have yes. that initial reaction like, wait, what's going to happen here? Or the initial yes. reaction of being angry or the initial, yes. you know, because that's how our guidance system works that we yes. respond. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's yeah. okay. That's so we're not saying like, mm, like you're going to be like, yes. that's not what we're talking about. No, we're talking about allow it to come but then make a decision what yes. do i want to do do i want to stay in the state of fear and anger mm -hmm. or can i transform can i shift mm -hmm. and you have a ton of tools you guys you if you are not inspired by rachel today i don't know what's going to inspire you i mean this <laughs> is inspirational like embodiment you know total embodiment of inspiration. So do we have questions, um, uh, Michael, for Rachel or any comments other than no she's beautiful and sorry? No specific questions. I'm sorry to interrupt, but a lot of positive comments. And, and that's exactly what I was thinking. If, you know, somebody that not only had the courage to put that dream out there, then mm -hmm. to actually live it and go through with it, and you both are showing people a pathway here that, you know, it's not necessarily easy, but it's absolutely attainable. So it's very mm -hmm. inspiring. Well, attainable and actually not so difficult. Okay. I mean, like, that's why we keep rehashing in the film. Like, you know, we brought like Rachel, like we keep saying she's never done it before, but mm -hmm. other people as well. Like, you know, we had other people who had never done it before. So that's the point of the film is yeah. to show that you don't have to be like a meditation teacher for 20 years to do these things. So there mm -hmm. are those who do that. But, you know, even folks who have never tried it, they try it, it works, then they build on it. And random folks as well, anybody can do this. And so that's why I feel so strongly about the film bringing that additional kind of validation and encouragement. So um, so that's great. So I appreciate, oh my God, Rachel, I'm sending you a virtual hug. You do, I'll hug <laughs> Virtual hug. I just so, I'm just so grateful that you are out there being this energy. I just think this is so inspirational. 
And I just hope you never stop. <laughs> well, I'm so grateful. And same with you, you know, that I'm just a, a reflection of, of you and, and you and me, you know, I think that's really important to remember as well. And I'm so inspired by you, you know, when I got to meet you, it empowered me so much. I'm like, wow, this woman, like wrote this whole thing, hosted this whole thing, produced it and directed. Like it inspired me so much to be like, man, I need to dream bigger, you know? So thank <laughs> you for inspiring me, you know, for stuff like this. Um, and for, for doing all that you do to help change, literally transform the world into a more loving, like healing, supportive space. Well, we're going to be doing more stuff together for sure. Yes, 100%. They are the type of energy that I want on my team. Yes. And so we just launched the film. So for those who just are tuning in, go to superhumanfilm.com. You'll see all the platforms, uh, iTunes, Amazon, Vimeo, whatever. Uh, and please, would, like, if you enjoy it, please leave comments on like Amazon yes. for other people to encourage other people. Rachel is the most featured in the whole film she does an incredible job so please go watch the film share it with your friends um and help us spread the word because this isn't about a film this isn't about an experiment this is about transformation and it's so timely and so helpful right now so please don't forget to do that and i am so grateful for your time sweetheart i send you all my love and then yeah yeah and please like everybody like let us know what you think of the film and share it like yeah just literally by sharing it and, and sharing with a friend or a family member like who knows how life-changing that could be for them i think i've had people share things with me whether it's a film or a youtube video or a book and it literally like changed the whole trajectory of my life like that one book i talked about at the beginning as an unthinking when i was 14 years old if i wouldn't have read that who knows <laughs> i wouldn't be here right now like i just wouldn't and so I really, you know, I think anytime you come across something that inspires you and empowers you, like share that because that's what helps literally create that ripple effect of, of transformation and love and healing in the world. Incredible. Couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much. And you guys keep coming, keep watching, keep sharing. And uh, even after we hang up, you know, you can still leave comments because we can go back to all the Facebook pages and respond to you. So we are here to collaborate together on this very, very successful launch of love. Yes, <laughs> launch of love. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, see you Bye, soon. Everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much.